Hi, it's Earth Computer. As a technical Minecraft player, you probably hear about hash sets and hash maps a lot, but you maybe don't know um, what they are, or if you do, they don't know why they're important or um, how they work. So I think I'll just take the time to um, explain uh, these things. And also, if, um, if you're not coming from a Minecraft context, hopefully this information will be uh, useful to you. So let's start by what actually is a set. What are we trying to achieve here with a hash set? So a set is just a collection of things. It can be pretty much anything. So it could be numbers, letters, words. I'm going to choose letters for this. So in my set, I'm going to have the letters A. Uh, let's, uh, let's just have the vowels A, E, I, O, and U. They don't have any order at all, they're just in the set or not. And um, the goal of the set is to just, given a letter, let's say U, um, I want to check if U is in the set or not. And I want to be able to do this check as fast as possible. Um, and obviously um, this set would, would return true, um, U is in this set. But if I ask, say, the letter Z, um, is Z in the set? Uh, and that would be false. That's true up there. True. Yeah. So that's the goal of a set. Um, obviously, it would be nice if you were able to add and remove from this set, um, like, efficiently. However, one of the goals of the set is not to have um, any kind of ordering as I've mentioned already so if you can get you can like iterate over all the elements in the set but uh, they could come out in uh, an unspecified order so it, it could be E A U O I could come out or it could be I A O U E you get the picture so yeah you shouldn't rely on the order but you should rely um, on every element in the set coming out in any kind of, um, in some order, yeah. Uh, in terms of maps, maps are somewhat similar to sets, but somewhat different too. So what maps do is they map a key from a value. So let's just give an example. Um, we're going to have maybe, I don't know, a class of students, um, and we want to take uh, we want to store the ages of each of these students. So we've got, um, let's say, a map here from name to age. And let's say this class has three students. There's Alice, who is 17. And we've got Bob, who is 20. Very um, broad range of ages here. and. Charlie, who is 19. So we want to efficiently be able to ask the question. Uh, let's say, how old is some string, some piece of text, Alice? And then we can take this string, search for it in the map. We find it here, hopefully very efficiently. Um, and then we could just go look over to the value. We found 17, and then we just, 17 is our answer. And yeah, the goal is we want to do this very efficiently and hopefully also insert and remove efficiently too. So you can see the similarities here. Um, similarly, the maps have um, no explicit ordering in general. So you probably noticed that maps and sets are just one and the same thing really. Maps are really just sets of pairs. Um, so from the rest of the video, I'm just going to be talking about um, sets. And if you, if you want to think about maps, just remember that maps are just a set of pairs. Um, OK, so I'm going to now define four um, elementary operations you can do on sets. I've talked about them already, um, but I want to define them more explicitly here. So we've got um, contains. Um, so contains checks if um, an element is in a set or not. We've got add. 
So add um, will add an element to a set um, if it does not already exist. So sets are, only, are not allowed duplicates in them. Uh, yeah, so after add, the set is guaranteed to contain that element basically. And then remove, oops, remove um, will remove an element from the set if it exists. Otherwise, it will do nothing. And then we've got iterator, which will uh, basically it will um, it will loop over the set to get every element in the set um, in some kind of unspecified order. Uh, but it will get all the elements in the set. So I've talked about all these already. Um, that's the more precise definition of them, I guess. There's also other operations you can do, like size, which just gets the size of the set, and yeah, is empty, which is kind of self-explanatory. Um, but yeah, these are the four that are most interesting. I should probably talk about the efficiency of all these things. So contains is very efficient, add is very efficient, remove is very efficient on sets, um, and iterator is just kind of, I don't know, so-so, it's kind of there. Um, it's not inefficient, but it's not efficient either. So there are three types of sets in Java. There's the tree set, the hash set, and the linked hash set. Um, obviously the hash set's what um, we're going to do in this video, so um, I'm not going to explain the tree set and the linked hash set too much, but I just want to compare them a bit. So the tree set is somewhat fast at contains add and remove, but not as fast as the hash set and the linked hash set. So the only reason you would really use a tree set is for the natural ordering. Uh, and natural ordering basically means that uh, no matter what order you put stuff into the tree set, um, you will always get stuff out in the natural order. So say I put in, um, in, in goes E, A, uh, I don't know, I, U, O. Um, out would always come, when you, when you call iterator, A, E, I, O, U. So that's the order. So sets usually have an undefined or unspecified order, but tree sets have this specified natural ordering. Um, and let's skip the, the hash set for a minute. The linked hash set is, I've marked it as very fast, but it's a little slower than the hash set, not much. Um, but it's slower because it has to maintain this insertion order. Um, and what that means is, if I insert, um, I don't know, I, U, A, E, O in that order, and then call iterator, uh, out would come I, U, A, E, O. So it's the same order that you inserted it in. So the uh, again, there's a defined order, unlike usual, uh, but it's the order that's inserted in this time. And the hash set is the fastest of the three, so if you don't need any ordering, uh, then you would usually go for the hash set, uh, uh, but the order is unspecified as we've talked about already. Uh, so for the rest of the video I'm just going to talk about the hash set. So before we start with the hash set, we're going to be talking about hash functions. So what a hash function does, it sounds complicated, but all it is, it's a function which takes in your element and it spits out just a number, uh, which is called the hash of the element. Um, and that sounds complicated, but basically um, there's no real requirements on what this number is. You can be whatever you like, as long as for the same element it will always spit out the same hash. Um, so, for example, Let's say we have the string hello, and we have the hash function, um, and we apply it to hello. Um, what what could the number be? Uh, I don't know what the actual value is, by the way, but it, it could be like I don't know. Uh, it could be 
could, it could be it could be this number here that spits out from hello, and then we maybe apply it to uh, I don't know hi, and maybe maybe it gives um just that number, uh, yeah, and the the point is that numbers are going to be most likely different from each other. So it's, ve it's very easy to tell whether two things are different straight away. Um, and if we just apply the hash function to hello again, we should get exactly the same result. Um, and the point of doing this is that they're numbers. Um, and because they're numbers, we can do, you know, maths on them. So the next step uh, for a hash set is you construct uh, an array. So we're going to start off with, um, so an actual hash set starts off with an array of 16, but I can't be bothered drawing 16 cells. So let's start off with something a bit less. Uh, let's say, let's go for four. Uh, it's a bit small for a hash set, but uh, let's go with it. And let's say we want to store um, hello into this hash set. So what we first do is we apply the hash function on hello and we get, um, I can't remember what I put, something like something like that, I can't, I can't remember the number I put. Um, and then what we do is we um, calculate uh, modulo the length of the array. So we've got 4 here and if my math is correct uh, that should be 2. Um, basically m modulo just takes um, so 0 modulo 4 is 0 and it's be 1 then 2 then 3 and then once we get to 4 we start at 0 again 0, 1, 2, 3 for 7 and then 8 is 0 so, so that and then we go all the way up here so we then store hello in the second element of the array the other elements still have nothing in them, and null in them. And then we want to store hi in there. Uh, and I can't remember what that hash to, but it may, I think it was like 820 or something. Um, and then we do modulo 4, and that's 0. So we're going to then store hi in this element of the array. So then to test whether um, hello's in the um, hash set, what we do is we, um, we ask, uh, does it contain hello, let's see, uh, what we do is we take f of hello again, a hash function of hello, uh, it will produce 6, 2, 5, 2, 8, 6, um, and then we take modulo uh, the length of this array, which is called the hash size, um, and we get out 2 again. So then we look at element 2 in the array, and we've immediately found it. So this is why the hash set is so fast. Um, it's because uh, all you have to do is compute this hash function, and then go and then jump straight to that element in the array, uh, usually you've either immediately found it or you've just found an empty cell like this or the wrong one. Um, so yeah, like it's very quick. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Earth, what happens when two, two strings get the same hash value, uh, which is allowed by the way, or if they or if they go into the same slot. Um, first of all, I want to point out that this is really likely. The um, the assumption that we're making here is that this hash function uh, should produce um, relatively evenly distributed results. Um, there are cases in Minecraft where this is not the case, and this is where we get to exploit it a bit. Um, but the assumption of the ha uh, what the hash set's making is that they're relatively evenly distributed. 
Um, so there's not much chance of this collision happening. Nevertheless, it is possible. Um, so what happens then? Let's, let's say we get a string, I don't know, il mumbo, and we put, um, compute the hash of this il mumbo, and it comes to, I don't know, let's say it's just 2, and then um, 2 modulo, I've increased the hash size to 8 because it's, that's more realistic, even though it starts at 16, um, and that's going to be 2, and this um, El Mumbo here is now going to try and go into the same slot as hello. So what happens is um, this slot becomes a list of slots, just a, just an ordered list. There's no, nothing special about it, and we're just going to put Il Mumbo here. Um, and yeah, so that, then when we search the hash set for Il Mumbo, uh, does it cont does this set contain Mumbo. Uh, what we do is we compute f of El Mumbo again, and we get out two and percent eight. That's two, uh, and we look into here. We see that El Mumbo is not equal to hello. So then we move on to the next one, um, and El Mumbo is equal to El Mumbo. So then we um, return true. Um, and we could get something else which hashes to two, and then that something else was not was not equal to hello or il mumbo, and then it returned false. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the the deal. What happens if they collide? Let's talk a little bit about iteration order. So here I've got I've initialized a hash set with a hash size of eight, even though it always starts off at sixteen, um, just because I'm lazy. And let's insert some elements in here. So we we're going to insert element A first um, and this element A is going to hash to um, I'm just going to give the hashes modulo 8 now I can't be bothered uh, this this so say this one um, hashes to 5 so A is going to go into 0 1 2 3 4 5 so here's A now and then I'm going to insert B B is going to hash to, I don't know, 3, uh, and B goes here, let's do a few more, I uh, need a few to kind of illustrate this, um, that goes to 0, uh, D, another 3, and E, so that goes to 4. Right, so the iteration order is um, kind of what you'd expect to be honest. Um, it it starts off here, see there's a C, and then it's going to go to here. There's nothing, and then that's nothing, and then we f find a B. Uh, then we go down here, we find a D. So we the, these ordered lists, these um, these are iterated over in order. These lists, um, and then it's iterating over the. Um, these this uh, this uh, like main array here. Uh, so we've gone from D, then we're going to E, then we're going to A, and then we've got two more empty slots, and then we're done. So this is the iteration order of this hash set. As you can see, there's not really much correspondence um, in comparison to the order that we inserted into the hash set. However, um, for the if if they hash to the same Value, um, or they have hashed the same val value modulo the hash size, which is eight. Um, then they will be um, they will come out in the order you put them in. So we put in B and D in that order, and out came B and D in that order. Um, if, if we were to have done the D before the B, then we would have got the D before the B in the output. Let's talk a bit more about the hash size. So. Uh, what happens when this hash set gets so full that the array is kind of starting to get full? Um, what happens then is there's something called a rehash. So I'm going to add an extra element. So let's say we add an F now. And that hashes to, I don't know, 7. doesn't really matter. Uh, what we're going to get now is a rehash because 
a rehash happens when the um, when the hash set is basically three quarters full. So the the capacity is, here is eight, and we've got six um, elements in here now. So that's three quarters full. That's the threshold. Um, and what happens in a rehash is the array here basically doubles in size. Um, so this um, array is going to be 16 now. And then we go through every element in the hash set and kind of recalculate where they are in the array. And um, it's a little bit inefficient, but um, if you um, only have to do it once, then it's not so bad. Finally, I want to quickly mention what happens when uh, you have this kind of situation here. So this, um, basically what's happening here is that every single one of these um, elements have the same hash modulo the hash size. So they're all going into the same bucket. Um, this um, is obviously really unlikely to happen. So it's basically only ever going to happen if either your hash function is really bad or somebody's found a way to exploit your hash function. Um, but yeah, if it does happen, then what happens uh, when you add the eighth element, um, h here, um, is, well first it's going to try to rehash a couple of times, but let's not focus on that. Uh, but um, if the hash size is at least 64 and this happens, then what's, what's going to happen is this is going to actually go out into a kind of tree structure. So we go out into like something like this. Uh, it's it kind of like how a tree set works. And obviously this is going to be faster. Uh, I don't know if that's the right number, but there you go. So, something like this. And um, yeah, that will at least kind of mitigate the problem of, um, you know, like... It will at least kind of mitigate the problem of doing having to do a linear search down the down the list here. Uh, be a bit faster. However, um, in this case, it does kind of mess up the iteration order. So um, I'm not actually entirely sure what the iteration order he is here. It's not really very important very often. Um, but uh, what I, I would imagine so something like it starts maybe the top and goes something like this, or or else it could start down here and go like this. You know, um, this is just the point is it's a different iteration order. It's not. Um, not first in, first out anymore. So hopefully I did a good enough a job at giving an overview of uh, the hash set. Um, this is probably going to be part of a multi-part series on the hash set and uh, the next couple of videos will, may go on more detail. Um, I'm actually going to um, be explaining how something called double tile tick scheduling works, which is something I actually showed last year but didn't explain. Um, it's, it's only really necessary to, sorry, to understand it in this detail if you um, if you want to understand how it works. But to be able to use it, uh, I might be able to come up with something simpler for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, overall, um, it's been fun. Thanks for watching.